So, thank you for listening to today's podcast. Today, I am joined by Itamar, Itamar, sorry, uh, from London. Itamar is a YouTube SEO specialist and a guy that I've been in contact with for a while on Facebook. Uh, so, hugely smart guy, knows the ins and outs of video marketing, YouTube and everything else. Um, so, we're going to be talking a bit about that today. So, welcome, Itamar. How are things with you? Yeah, thanks for having me, Craig. That's a, it's quite a warm introduction, making me feel all, all special. Well, you're special. <laughs> yeah, well, no, <laughs> yeah, all good on my end. How are you doing? Um, all good. Yeah, I've got to make you feel special so that you drop enough information um, oh, yeah. to make it worthwhile. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, all, it's all exclusive to, the, to Craig's uh, podcast here, so everyone else can miss out. Yeah. So... Um, so for anyone who's never heard of you, obviously I've um, been speaking to you for probably a year or so on Facebook mm-hmm. um, or whatever it is. But what, you know, what is it you do day to day? What you know, what is your your you know? Are you in house or are you freelance? Uh, I've been I've done like agency side. I've done freelance side. I mean, currently it's more uh, kind of freelance projects. So I'd be helping clients with their websites, with their video marketing, with their YouTube channels, um, all around that. I do consult as well, uh, for, for YouTube and for YouTube SEO. Uh, but it's all kind of based around that organic, uh, search and uh, video marketing. And I take it, uh, I know this is going to sound stupid, um, but I'm assuming that video marketing um, and YouTube and everything else is is very much an important part of today's online marketing. Oh, absolutely. Like video is, is abs- I mean, if, if you don't know how important video is, then it's like you've been living under a rock because, I mean, all, you see all of these trends and all of the, the data that comes out about how many people actually uh, enjoy consuming video content as opposed to traditional uh, text or or even infographics and, and blog posts, etc. So video is such a booming uh, aspect of, of online um, digital platforms and it's something that pretty much everyone should be getting into if they haven't already yeah i think for me personally i hate reading books and i hate reading blog posts that are you know five thousand words long or whatever I, i'd much rather either listen or watch a video that's what i do at night before i go to bed is, is just check out youtube videos it's pretty weird um but i would you know for me personally I've done webinars and stuff, but I've not done a huge amount of YouTube stuff. Um, I've done a few tutorials and whatnot, but it's not something I would say that I'm personally fully engaged in. Um, and you know, I do realise I'm missing a trick uh, by not doing that. And it's all good and well. I've got videos there, but I'm not doing what people that like you would do with those videos. And obviously, that's something I want to dig into um because it's all good and well you know setting up a youtube channel and chucking a few videos up but that's where someone like you is going to um step in and say you know (laughs) you're not even you know you're not even doing the basics right there you know there's a lot more to it so um you know what what sort of things would people you know what is the sort of process that a, a person like you would take as opposed to me just youtube channel and chucking chucking a, an interview up on uh, youtube you know what where am i going wrong with that and what should i be doing well i think it's all just down to strategy so video should be a part of your kind of overall uh, marketing strategy or for, for for your brand your business it doesn't matter what it is i think if you just try and have a video uploaded say on youtube um, or without kind of uh, having any attribution to to your your website or for, for like a greater goal, be that being uh, to generate some leads or things like that, uh, then I think you're, ju- you're just kind of like on an island by yourself. You know, your, your videos are hosted on YouTube. That's great. But are people watching it? What do you want to get people to do? Uh, when when they've seen it? So these are all sorts of questions that you first have to ask yourself. Uh, because uh, I've seen loads of people who kind of just rush into video and say, okay, I'm going to create a YouTube channel. I'm going to be 
very successful. I'm going to get loads of views, but it just doesn't happen because there's there's no real strategy to it. And um, and all that begins with really is is you need to just ask yourself these questions like what is what is the purpose of what you're doing because it's so saturated. YouTube is such a saturated platform. It's the second largest uh, search engine in the world, and to think that all of the content there is video form then there's just so, so much content on there that if you really want to differentiate yourself and use uh, YouTube kind of like solely as, as your only kind of way of getting traction, then it's not really going to work. You need uh, to have good uh, social media uh, marketing strategies in place so that you're able to at least uh, share your content around the right audience and get people engaging with your stuff. Yeah, I think that that's obviously where I see a lot of people going wrong, including myself. And that, you know, I think I spoke to yourself a few months ago asking you what uh, um, end screen was and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I seen someone talking about it somewhere, and I'm like, I don't have an end screen. I, I've always had an intro because I thought it, it's always cool to have the same intro. But you know, I, I've I see lots of videos where people, you know, at the very start are saying subscribe to my channel now blah, 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 um, and, you know, the end card and everything else. But, you know, in terms of um, getting traffic to these videos, um, you know, YouTube SEO and whatnot, um, I, I, I take it that's something you do as part of a service where you're going to do the research and obviously put in the title, you know, whether it's, you know, SEO tutorials or whatever the hell they the kind of things going to be. I'm, I'm assuming there's an on-page element to YouTube SEO. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's on-page and off-page. It's it's this is where it's it gets very similar to like how you'd optimize a website because there's there's a few different aspects and and quite a lot of different elements that that you can kind of optimize and work with in order to over time start increasing your your rankings for certain videos for the the keywords that you're targeting. Um, so yeah, there's there's loads of different. Uh, elements so the on on page stuff per se would be things like your your titles your descriptions your tags um and there's also other elements that 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 aren't stuff that you can necessarily optimize if we're talking for example thumbnails the only thing you can really do with your thumbnails is just a you'd want to make it eye-catching and consistent with your brand and B, I suppose, would just be the the file, the name of the file where you save it as if you want to include uh, well the keywords there, which you should generally because, I mean, when you upload images, it shouldn't be like img4321.png or .jpg. It should be like at least relevant to, to whatever it is um, that that image is. Uh, but, yeah, so th- like in terms of main on-page stuff, it would definitely be uh, well, your channel name would be one, uh, but if we're talking videos specifically, then yeah, the titles, descriptions, tags. Um, and, but, you know, I'm assuming if you're doing research on that, you would use similar tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs or something like that to see what the search volume is um, prior to doing that. Or, or is there somewhere else that YouTube guys go to to get that kind of data? Well, there's, there's quite a few different tools that... Um, will will kind of give you uh like search volume data but uh the th- the thing is with those is that they're never going to be 100% just because Google don't tell you um what YouTube search volume is exactly so the only things you can really work with is either the Google's own like for Google search uh search volumes and metrics or it's like other platforms i know that uh Ahrefs uh, they do have YouTube keyword research, and that's using uh, they use uh, clickstream data to obtain that. But at the same time, it's never going to be a hundred percent accurate. So that's that's also why it can be quite tricky. Uh, but what I'd recommend is just you know finding trends. So Google Trends is really good uh, identifying kind of what's popular, and then just trying to create content for that. If you're thinking about what types of content to make, you can compare different terms and see what's what's more popular uh and the other thing is just the auto suggest that you have when you start typing things into youtube because youtube will know what people are searching right and they'll try and best help the user find the more relevant searches so then even just using that it's so simple but i think it's quite uh underutilized 
when it comes to like thinking of of what kind of keywords to target. Um, so I've I've also when I've been doing research on YouTube and stuff in the past, you know, I've seen tools like I can't remember the exact name of it. It was something like Tube Buddy or or YouTube Buddy or something, which gives you pointers in the right direction of what you should be doing on on the on page side of things. Is that something you'd recommend, or are those normally just giving you any old shit? You know, I'd, I'd love to know from an expert point of view. Is that something you would use or or not? I mean, I've I've had a look into it. I've had it downloaded. Um, there's quite a few like TubeBuddy different Chrome extensions. There's VidIQ. You know, I've had a mess around with with all of those. They all do different different things, I suppose. In some ways, they're similar. In other ways, they're not. Um, but they're, they're all pointers, and I suppose if they're free, why not use them? Um, you know, the, in terms of the search volume and stuff, you're never going to get an exact. Uh, number but for other things they they can be quite useful i think that uh vidiq for example will tell you uh like the amount of times in the search result uh that the amount of videos that have the exact like order of the keywords as you've placed them in the video title and it's just little things like that that can just help make your research uh, a lot easier um and it it also tells you like who the top creators are and and things like that so you can kind of get an idea as to how competitive is this keyword for the videos that are already ranking for it um but you know if a tool is free like i suppose you know there's no harm in using it i suppose and that's the the thing to take away uh but you know at the end of the day it's like you shouldn't rely on these tools to to get you loads of views if that makes sense there's there's the majority of the work has to be done through through yourself through the content that you're making through how you're spreading it it's all about your network as well that's really really important uh, to help gain traction because if you've got a strong network of people who are interested in what you're putting out then most likely they'll watch uh, the majority if not all of your video content if it's good right so the underlying concept is that your video has to be really, really good so that people want to watch it, not so that they kind of go on it and click off. Uh, because watch time is really important uh, for YouTube because when YouTube shows videos on the results, they want to show videos that people deem to be relevant. And a video that only that people watch only 10% of isn't going to be as relevant in YouTube's eyes as a video that has 90% of it being watched by the audiences. Um, so I mean, going, you know, obviously you've covered the, the kind of on-site side of things. I'm assuming things like having the right camera, the right background and all of that kind of stuff is also something that you, if someone was coming to you for consultancy, you would advise on better lights, better backgrounds, better everything. Um, you know, is that a big thing for you or, you know, you, you, we, we, if someone hadn't done this before and was stepping into this, you know, is there any kind of advice on what you'd advise people to buy or how much to spend or where to buy it? Yeah, I mean, equipment is very, very crucial when it comes to video because at the end of the day, this is your brand and you want to present your brand in the best possible light. Uh, no pun intended, but lighting is really, really important um, and amongst your 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 microphone, your camera, uh, things like that. Even how you present yourself on video is really important. You know, you need to be uh, comfortable speaking in front of a video camera and um, you need to there's all sorts of these different elements and and not all of them stem through the equipment but a lot of it is actually the person behind uh behind the screen you know the person who's actually featuring in the video because that plays a very very important role for example in how to increase your your retention and how to keep people watching your videos so i yeah i would advise a lot about you know, what sort of equipment to get, like the the cameras, microphones, uh, lighting, green screens if people need them, um, et cetera. But, you know, a lot of it is also just down to you as a person. So some people have told me in the past that they, they want advice on, on kind of like what to do when, when they speak on camera. And there's, there's certain things that I found in my experience um, that I've got better at over time in terms of uh, kind of kind of portraying myself and uh, being able to, to speaking and, and all sorts of this is really, really good practice. So I'm uh, just helping people from my experience on how to do that. Cause when I started out over 11 years ago, like my, the way I would be 
on camera would be very, very uh, kind of shy. There'd be lots of monotone. There wouldn't be too much expression. And a lot of times that stuff you'll see uh, when people start out, because if they hadn't had this prior experience, um, some people might find it difficult to to kind of show themselves on camera, even if they're actually quite different and are perfectly fine like in real life. But then some people might kind of have that fear of uh, going on video. And so that, yeah, that's all stuff that I kind of talk about and help people, I suppose, know about what to get, but also how to be more comfortable uh, when you're shooting videos. Interesting. Um, so on the off-site or the kind of off-page kind of stuff that you do with YouTube SEO, can you touch on a few things that would potentially, you know, obviously link building's not going to be a thing, but I'm assuming things like, you know, traffic, um, user engagement, and all that kind of stuff are what you would deem off-page SEO when it comes to YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the when, we, when we're saying kind of off-page, uh, you know, yeah, like you mentioned, we're not talking about backlinks and things like that, but we're talking about the kind of the broader, more external things that you can kind of tap into in order to help increase your your engagement and potentially the amount of traffic that you get to your videos. So uh, the first thing that I would kind of do is help kind of figure out where are your audience placed? Where are they? You know, there's, there's things such as uh, like, brand communities or forums, uh, loads of different things where people come together who are interested in one particular niche. And then the job is to kind of find that, capture it, um, help people, you know, build ways to engage with that niche. And then uh, when suitable, then kind of pointing towards their video content um, because it's it's a very tricky thing to go and do. And, and I think what people get wrong loads of the time is that they – they, they lack the, the kind of patience in order to help um, kind of make them a part of a community, uh, whereas instead they're kind of just like going on different Facebook groups. They join a group and they'll just put a link to their video without any context or things like that. And, and that's stuff that I see happening so much, but it's just so ineffective. Uh, and, and a lot of times people think it's quite effective, but it really isn't. So it's like the, the way I would do it is, uh, you know, you need to be able to find people. You need to know what, what platforms to use to find these communities. So Reddit is a goldmine of finding these niche communities where people will be interested more likely than not that uh, like within the the niche or the, the types of content that you're making. And all you have to do is really just go in there and engage. You know, you need to put in the time to 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 kind of provide useful uh, material and build yourself up in these communities before you can then start kind of advertising yourself because you know if if you want to want people to to go and view your content first you have to give right and it's like you know when I say give I don't mean just like link to your post if you think it's 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 relevant like if you find opportunities to link to your content when it's relevant at least you know provide a, a more in depth answer let's say if you're commenting on Reddit and then put a link to your video because more more likely than not, people will end up clicking on the video if you've actually added some context in there as opposed to somebody just seeing a YouTube link and they're just not going to click on it because they don't really know uh, what it's about. They don't know who you are. Um, so a lot of times when, when we're talking about the off-page stuff, it's more about finding these communities and being able to engage and get people interested in you as a person. They need to be invested in you before they can be invested in your content. And I think that's uh, one of the main things I see people get wrong is that they keep trying to like bombard people with videos. But, you know, if no one really knows who you are and, and why you're doing this, they'll just think it's spam. And people can detect spam so easily nowadays because it's everywhere. Um, but. Yeah, don't I know it. <laughs> I probably spend about 15 minutes of every morning before I do a single thing, just deleting all the spam from you know, last thing at night to, to through uh, to first thing in the morning. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> but I want to touch on, obviously, you're saying their engagement through Reddit and stuff makes perfect sense to me. And, you know, it's like networking with other SEOs and stuff. You've got to put the time in, get to know the community, and, and obviously things will happen, opportunities happen. It's I'm assuming it's similar on Reddit and, and stuff like that. Um, but I do hear a lot of people saying, buy YouTube, um, subscribers, buy YouTube likes, buy YouTube views, 
does any of that stuff actually work or are people wasting their time with the kind of bot traffic or, or whatever kind of stuff they're buying out there? No, it's uh, it's not going to do anything for you. It's it's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. And you're harming yourself because you're not really getting the true uh, picture of your audience and all that kind of stuff does. It just skews it and it's misinformation. And I mean, you can buy likes, you can buy views or whatever, but I mean, even if you're buying views where they'll get bots to watch the entire video, it's just, what, what's it going to really do for you at the end of the day? It's not going to be increasing your your rankings. It's not going to be getting you conversions. It's not going to get people talking about your brand. Um, it's, yeah, if you, anything YouTube related, if you need to purchase something, then you're doing it wrong and, and you've got the wrong mindset uh, because even, you know, everyone has to start from zero. I've started from zero many, many times. Like I've had countless, countless YouTube channels on all sorts of different topics, be it gaming, technology, sports. Um, you know, you have to start from zero, but YouTube and video content creation is a thing you do need to invest time in. Um, and it's something that you need to treat really, really well. Uh, because as soon as you start purchasing views or likes or whatever, then all all the hard work that you've done, it kind of just goes out the window. Because then you know th th these are not good signals, and it's not uh, it's not accurate. And the thing is with YouTube, you want it to be accurate. Even the amount of dislikes you get, like you know, yeah. every YouTube video will have dislike. That's just how YouTube is. That's how the internet is. There's people who will dislike your content, um, which is fine, but uh, I see a lot of times people complaining about this as well. And I'm just like, well, you know, somebody who's watching the video cares more about, you know, what you're saying as opposed to like likes to dislikes, which, which I guess in some ways, if it's a new, um, if it's somebody new watching your video who's never seen you before, that may be an indication. But more often than not, you will get more likes than dislikes if you have a good video, right? Because that's just how it is. And I mean, if you need help, getting more likes just you know ask in your video don't just ask every few seconds but you know ask towards uh towards the end i don't like it really when people ask for likes as soon as the video begins because you know they don't really know what you're saying so you're just asking for these these things straight away and it kind of just seems very like you don't really care too much about the yeah. you care about these these metrics and um so you just need to be strategic, you know, you need to be honest. And I think being transparent, it goes a long way, um, not just on YouTube, but generally, like you need to be really honest with with what what you have. Um, so obviously, I, I don't want to put you in the spot or anything like that. But, you know, in the SEO world, you can be honest and transparent and hope that, you know, you put out a bit of content and everyone's going to like it. And that's what Google want you to believe. Is that you know? Is you know? Is there people out there who are cheating and gaming the system in YouTube, and and you know what you're saying is just going to slow you down? Um, you know, not. I, I mean, I'm not a YouTube expert, so I'm not trying to suggest otherwise. But you know, you, you get guys in SEO who are white hat who don't push the boundaries, and I'm assuming you probably get similar in YouTube. I, I mean, is there any evidence to suggest that YouTube actually do like? ignore those kind of fake bots and traffic or you know because i you know i hear conflicting information and it's the same as seo you walk in you don't know who to believe um, and you know i just wanted to know if you're playing the white hat side of things in youtube um and you know there is a black hat that could potentially work even if it's for the shorter term I mean, there's people who will obviously try, like, if we're saying black hat techniques in terms of, like, buying views, buying likes, uh, things like that. From what I know from my experience, these things don't really work uh, because many years ago, YouTube, they, they started capping, uh, for example, like, video views from the same. I mean, if we go all the way back to when YouTube started, you could refresh on your video as many times as you want and you get more views. And then they realized that that's it's quite a broken system. So then they ended up <laughs> capping it. Uh, for the same IP and then you would if you were to do that it would come up with like uh, in the 300s uh, and then it would just stop there until it's noticed that it's getting like more more traction from different IPs um, so I mean you know if, if you're the reason why it's different when we talk white hat black hat when we're saying SEO compared with YouTube and YouTube SEO 
is because it's just there's a lot more elements on on websites and what you can do for 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 kind of Google search um, than you can really on YouTube because YouTube is really based about you know when people are subscribed to channels and and kind of audience retention those kinds of things that's why it makes it a lot more difficult to to kind of implement black hat techniques that will work on the platform so it just doesn't seem to be too viable um, to kind of say oh I've bought loads of subscribers and I buy loads of views but that that won't mean too much I'm pretty sure YouTube is is it kind of like smart enough to detect where views are coming from uh, you know watch time is obviously very important um, likes are very important comments uh, and and they also know they because they have data about the the kind of accounts so for example if you're buying subscribers youtube will know like that these are accounts with maybe just uh they'll have a profile picture sure but they just subscribe to loads of uh different channels they don't really watch any of the videos and then you know that that is red flags and over time the algorithms get a lot better at detecting this and of course they've thought about it um so, you know it's not something new for them so i think yeah you know black hat techniques don't really work on youtube i mean if anyone has had success with it that has like legitimate long-term sustainable views and and uh, fan bases doing that then let me know because i i personally don't know any um <laughs> yeah no the pro the probably isn't i just thought i'd ask the question because it's one of those things people will want to know um whether you know as i say i can only compare it to what i do seo and people say listen i don't you know i don't believe in this you know waiting organic links and all that kind of stuff um, and obviously we know with SEO that you can bend the rules slightly but I was just curious to know if it was the same with YouTube but it makes total sense if people have been spamming and you can see your IP address or you know accounts with uh, you know that are subscribing to every Tom, Dick and Harry's um, YouTube channel then it would make perfect sense for them to kind of give no weight to, to those kind of subscribers or whatever. Um, but as I say, you've got to ask the question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, and also, uh, just to, to add on that, uh, the number of subscribers you have doesn't actually do anything for you uh, in terms of it's not going to help you make money off YouTube uh, if, you're, if you're like monetizing your videos and it doesn't uh, necessarily make you rank higher. So that's another another thing to keep in mind uh, so when people are saying always like oh i need to buy subscribers i need more subscribers it's just like you know it's just vanity really that's all it is yeah um, so is, is there any you know one or two things that you do feel make a difference to youtube obviously you're saying subscribers don't make a blind bit of difference but is there like is, is more comments you know something that would move the needle um i, I know potentially real views would it would make sense you know user signals to to kind of help with ranking but you know is there anything there you can tell us that you in your experience you've seen that actually helps a lot uh, because you know i've got i've got my um comments on my youtube channel blocked purely because i get a lot of trolls and stuff um and I, I just can't be bothered looking at them going oh you dick and all that kind of stuff so i've, I've got my comments um disabled yeah. and people are saying that could potentially be hampering um you know the kind of on page or the kind of user signals or whatever it might be on youtube you know is that something you would agree with uh potentially and the reason why i say that is because uh youtube have recently started disabling comments on videos that contain like people like kids people underage and things like that so they automatically will block the comments but that doesn't stop those videos from ranking if that makes sense um, i think a bigger indication uh, would be things such as watch time percentage things like the click-through rate uh, because these are all kind of signals where where you think of it from a user perspective and how youtube wants people to find videos that are relevant you know, your click-through rate is going to indicate relevancy. Watch time percentage is going to indicate relevancy because if people are watching almost the entire video, it means that they're engaged with it and that the use uh, the information in that video is useful. So I would say definitely things like watch time, click-through rate, uh, but also also likes uh, can help. Uh, I mean, unless you disable like likes and disable comments, but they shouldn't be like at the top of your priority. Like so, if we're talking priorities, just make your titles 
eye-catching, make your thumbnails eye-catching, make them consistent, and then make sure that your video is good. Because if your video is not good, then your watch time is going to be really, really poor um, compared to the amount of views that you're getting. Um, and, I t I, I, you know, in terms of the end of videos and whatnot, you know, the end screens and stuff, is that something you would highly recommend people use and, and why would you use those if you are recommending it or is it a take it or leave it? You don't really have to do anything. I think we should use them anyway because, I mean, you know, you have up to four modules in the last 20 seconds of the video to use the end screens and, and you can use end screens even if you're not using it to show other videos. You could just have the icon of your channel where people can just easily click on it to subscribe. Um, and the same thing with cards. I think cards are more selective because you should use them throughout like the video. If there's a certain point where you're talking about something that you can provide extra uh, information on that you may have had on a different video, but end screens, there shouldn't really be a reason not to use them. The only thing you'd need to, to keep in mind is uh, like when you're editing your video, if you want to have an end screen that's 20 seconds long, then just leave like an extra 20 seconds of your video and just get like a, te a nice template for it. So at least people have time to kind of go through what you have. If it's like a, uh, like a different playlist, you're trying to, you're trying to show off for another video that's relevant or to subscribe to your channel. Um, yeah, there really shouldn't be a reason why people don't use end screens. I mean, they're, they're available for you to use. So it's just one of those things that just help uh, kind of differentiate yourself, I suppose, or just, you know, putting in the extra effort. And, you know, speaking of extra effort, if you want to go and add like subtitles and closed captions to your videos, that's also really good uh, because like the YouTube bots can crawl that that file that you've sent so they'll get a better understanding of what the video is about uh and sometimes that's important because whilst it will be able to kind of uh detect what you're saying a lot of times it will get words mixed up so it's better to always have a really accurate uh kind of like a file uh, where you can transcribe the audio and then that's a lot better for for the bots to to crawl it and see what the video is about Interesting, interesting. Sadly, we are just about out of time, <laughs> and I feel as if we've only really just kind of scratched the surface. It's a, a very interesting subject, but I think what you've done is give people a better understanding of the, you know what goes on behind the scenes in terms of YouTube optimization, and that there are things to do other than shove a video up um, and hope for the best. Um, where can people find you if they're looking to get some YouTube tips, advice, or, or you know, hire you for consultancy or whatever it may be? Where's the best pe place for people to find you? Uh, I'm pretty much active on, on the main uh, social media. So we're talking like uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, I'm pretty active on those. So just send me a message anytime if you have any queries and uh, things like that. And and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And the name is Itamar Blauer. Is that correct? Itamar Blauer. That was almost perfect. Blauer. And it's not, <laughs> I'm not saying that because of your accent. That was genuinely pretty close. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I gave it a go. I hate, as I say, I hate pronouncing the name. Where, where does that name actually come from? Uh, Israel. Well, my first Israel. name is, is from Israel. My surname's German. Uh, but I don't speak do German. Know? <laughs> a man of many cultures yeah. and a perfectly <laughs> a perfect English accent. So, um, yeah, that's been amazing. I, I do want to thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure. And hopefully um, we can maybe get you back on in the future for something a bit more in-depth in terms of YouTube, um, if you're up for that. So, um, yeah, thank you for your time today. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me, Craig. And uh, thanks to everyone watching at home. Or listening in. <laughs>